Okay, here we go again, Dino Dan, back with you. Hey, I was just uh, running through PowerCore and a DJT file, and I wanted to share with you a little tip or trick and uh, that I think that'll save you some time. Um, and uh, anyhow, let me just set this up. So I'm helping a guy with a Sportster S with a custom equal length exhaust system. And um, anyhow, we've been data logging back and forth, making iterative changes to his tune. And uh, anyhow, he's on a really, really early version of the operating system that Harley released for this vehicle, which was software level uh, 35. So this Cal right here is the one we spent a lot of time on, data logging, making changes, rinse, repeat, all that jazz. Uh, anyhow, software level 40 is the latest software level for the RevMax applications. And we thought it would be a good idea to um, use software level 40. This is, you know, kind of under the hood, deep in the bones, operating system differences, not just, you know, calibration differences. So anyhow, um, so let me, that's kind of the setup. And this guy is a PowerVision 3 customer. And so there is a way, believe it or not, it'll have to be a different video on a different day, there is a way to switch software levels with your PowerVision 3. As long as you have all the right files, the uh, firmware um, does support that on PowerVision 3. So anyhow, again, different topic, different day. So what I wanted to do was, um, you know, show you something here where, yeah, if I wanted to take these values from this Cal and drop it into this Cal, I could have just used the value file system. That's exactly what it is for. I click uncheck all. I check only those that are modified. Try to remember, yeah, did I change these things? Yeah, I sure did. And PowerCore is smart enough to know that I did. And uh, I could simply just say, export these values and it would puke them out. And, uh, and then I could then import those values and it would do so. So that's what the that's what the value file system is is to do. Take previous, you know, uh, calibration data that you've you know generated and used, and could be spark tables, could be you know fuel tables, VE tables, could be a lot of things, and apply them to a different project, a different tune file. What I elected to do, and maybe you already know this, but uh, maybe some of you don't. I simply said, I want these values to. Uh, exist in this software level 40 stone stock tune. So what I did is I said, all right, let's just compare to uh, software level 40. So there's my differences, right? Okay. Now, the easiest way is to use this compare feature. And of course, you can always view as a percentage or not. There's a little toggle uh, flag box right here. Um, anyhow, all you need to do to say, you know what, I don't want there to be any difference between VE front cylinder, between these two files. Okay, so all you have to do is tap this corner to highlight the entire grid, type in zero on the keyboard, and click enter. Okay, now there is no difference. Same, same, same difference. Okay, go back to comparison, it's gone exactly what we wanted to see there is no difference all right so then just walk you through it one more time and we'll we'll get over the hump here tap the corner highlights the whole thing zero done okay so now these two tunes at least have matching ve front and rear there is no difference it's not even shown here because there's no difference so Anyhow, hopefully that uh, is a helpful tip or trick, and we'll see you on the next video.